Hey everybody. I wanted to do a Squatch Ramble today. And it's covering a few different things, but um, I've been online now for two years. And remember when you first started looking for stuff on Bigfoot or Sasquatch online? Uh, the curiosity that was there, the interest that you had that was there, and um, that kind of enjoyment of mystery. Now, it, it's, it's a bit of a disappointment to me, I think, that for some reason it can't be maintained after you get involved in the online process. And I'm not speaking about me specifically in regards to, you know, I've been flying under the radar for a specific reason and I'll probably keep flying under the radar for as long as I can because, you know, I've met some really good quality researchers out there and when I say researchers I want to I want to be fair about that. I don't uh, try to hold to any specific school of thought other than my own formulation, my own hypothesis, and I try to be critical with myself, not criticizing, but you know those four things I keep talking about. And my goodness, I just am surprised at how many people go after other people online. And you know, being meeting up with some really good researchers. No, I, I now know three really good researchers that have been out in the field for a, uh, quite a few, quite a long time now. That I'm just throwing in the towel. I just want to caution you guys. Uh, listen, when you're coming into this, what you're perceiving you're going to walk into in regards to the environment uh, uh, isn't going to be, after you get in it, uh, it's probably not going to be the way you're hoping it's going to be. Now, I want to make sure, like I've mentioned numerous times, I have met some really good people in the Bigfoot community. I've met some really good researchers. I've met researchers that I don't agree at all with their position. Uh, but it's not my job to say anything as far as criticizing them. I look at any kind of research as a toss, so a, a toss salad approach. Uh, when all is said and done, and we finally find out what we're really dealing with, what's more likely going to happen is going to be a toss salad of a variety of schools of thought on whatever the topic is. This goes across the board any style of research. It's not usually just one person's. Uh, hours or days or years invested in researching something. It's usually an accumulation of a variety of different researches over a period of years uh, that finally solve whatever puzzle it is uh, that we are trying to discover or uh, understand. But, you know, I just wish, and I guess this is part of my helping the process out because you can't sit here and complain about everything uh, or complain about things uh, without coming up with some forms of solutions. So I guess part of the idea of my channel, which is trying to be an educational channel and trying to be fair about what, at least what I come across or Bigfoot Okanagan comes across, to present stuff that is helpful, educational, and flexible uh, that could be upgraded. And uh, I mean, I don't know anybody who would probably, if they're honest with themselves, say they 100% uh, no for sure. I think if anyone was to say 100% no for sure in regards to their hypothesis or position on Sasquatches, if they're saying that, for, for myself, I certainly wouldn't watch their channel because I don't think that's realistic. Um, the idea about when you go online, I want you to protect yourself a little bit. If you're putting YouTube videos online, one way of protecting yourself is when you do up your YouTube channel and you do your U first uh, your YouTube videos, below the box of the description, you'll notice it asks for like uh, hashtag words so that if people are looking for what you're trying to find, um, uh, they can find it more. Uh, I want to suggest to you, new guys, don't fill that out at all. Just find a site where you can kind of show your videos so you get a chance to kind of evolve that whole process. It's going to take you, like I mentioned, two years is a good safe time to uh, kind of get a good taste of what you walked into in regards to the online stuff. The online stuff isn't the same thing that 
what I'm talking about in regards to the Sasquatch searching. Remember, online stuff is all just research. And, or not research, is resources for your own personal research or your own personal information of education, educating yourself. And the other thing I think that kind of fools us a little bit is sometimes we go on sites and they have, you know, 50,000 viewers. 50,000 viewers. Well, 50,000 viewers, that's pretty impressive. Or say 120,000 viewers, and that's pretty impressive. But as a cautionary note, because you have 50,000 viewers or 100,000 viewers, it doesn't mean that the person is solid. I have seen and met, um, and I'm not mentioning any names or anything, but uh, certain people that if you saw their viewer or subscribers, you would think that they were really good people. Why? Well, because they have all these viewers and subscribers or subscribers watching their channel. But I've also seen a lot, not all of them, I'm not saying everybody, okay? This, this is just all cautionary. Um, some of those people that you would think because of the amount of views they have or subscribers they have to their channel, uh, you would think they would be fairly solid. But I have seen some of certain channels that have a high following actually be exceptionally toxic to other researchers. and. You know, I when I go online, one of the things I look for, of course, same as you would, which is the amount of viewers. Why? Because I'd like to track them down in North America, contact them, meet up with them, film them, see their positions, and uh, and it's kind of like when you walk into any kind of system. At the beginning, there's something about the system or the topic that makes you want to enter into that system, whether it be hunting, fishing, macrame, <laughs> whatever it happens to be. And uh, you're going in there out of uh, a trusting regulator, as I mentioned before. And you're trusting that uh, when you walk in there, they're going to be fairly fair about the process. But as you get into the system, and the faith groups are kind of like this too, as you get into the system, you start seeing what's going on behind the scenes. And that's what's missing a lot of times. And I mentioned before, it's like counseling and dating are the same kind of thing. It's not what they tell you on the first, second, third date. It's what they're not telling you on the first, second, third date. <laughs> same way with counseling. It's not what they're saying in the first, second, third session. It's what they're not saying to us on the first, second, third session. <laughs> it's the same way in the Bigfoot community. It's not what they're telling us on the first, second, third video. It's what they're not telling us that we need to know. <laughs> you know? Um, I remember, and I mentioned this, I think, before, when I got into the Bigfoot community, it was really about the mystery of it. Uh, it was something to totally distract me from what I do all year round, which is being in people's minds. And, um, you know, I, I got into it because of some of the unique, yeah, creative people that I found out there and the, their techniques that they use. <clears throat> and I think Tristan is her name. I'll verify it here, though, if I'm wrong. And, you know, she sits in the middle of a, if she finds a mountain, pocket like that. She sits right in the middle of the meadow of it. She brings her harp out and she plays it. Now, now I like that. I like that idea of that creativity to negotiate and navigate at the ability where a person's at to come up with creative resources to uh, somehow help them to negotiate. Uh, now I don't play the harp so I can't harp on somebody who does play the harp. But I think there's nothing more that something, nothing more amazing that would soothe the, uh, what the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, Leon? Soothe the spirit of the beast than in the middle of the night hearing harp music being played through a nice mountain range. Uh, does it work for her? I'm not sure if it works for her or not, but it seems to, from her side, it seems to do uh, help her, and I think that's just awesome. I want to say something else too. Listen, I like a toss salad approach. I am not threatened by anybody else's perspective. I mentioned that before. I don't, you know, whether it's the woo or Sasquatch and UFOs are somehow associated, they're aliens, or, you know, even that video I did on tree structures. That's not about anybody else's stuff. That's about my perspective on that stuff. The same way that uh, those other views have nothing to do with me. Uh, if we're searching for truth, I'm assuming that all of us will finally or come to eventual kind of common ground in those things if we're honest with their process. 
But, you know, I've seen people like Christopher Noel. Uh, I don't agree with everything that Christopher says, and he probably doesn't agree with everything that I says. And I don't know Christopher. I've talked to him a little bit online, but, you know, what I know about Christopher is, man, the guy's got some pretty good fortitude, like I mentioned in that other video. I mean, I've seen all, probably all of his videos. Um, and that's what I'm looking for. I mean, if the guy's got the diligence to get out there and do what he does, and, uh, you know, some of the other... Uh, the other people. I like listening to different concepts and ideas. Uh, I like listening to Michael Merchant. I don't agree with Michael Merchant, but I like listening to him. Why? Because it forms new neuropathic ways in my head, which means that my brain has more resources, open system. My brain's an open system and not a closed system with ideologies. Because uh, I'm pretty sure when you guys were younger, you had a certain perspective of what you believe life is or what's going to be. But from this viewpoint now as the adult, depending on what age you're at, uh, those probably have all adjusted. And this flexibility thing is important. I think the reason why I wanted to do this ramble was, listen, again, I have maybe 200 subscribers on, maybe a little under 200 subscribers on my channel. I like that. Uh, I don't want 50,000. I don't need 50,000. What I need is just a few allies out there. And I'm hoping that those allies will continue to be the way they have been and they've shown themselves to be, which is just fair about their process. I don't care what they come up with, man. They want to put balloons all up with a, a live marching band every morning at 3 a.m. If that works for them, I think that's awesome. <laughs> but to sit here and, and listen to some of the brutality that I've had to personally witness with myself and I've been pretty fortunate because again I've kept myself protected a little bit by flying under the radar but some of these other guys that have been long school people up there um, and again two years three main good really good quality researchers thrown in the towel and then find out again today from one of them that the toxic experience they've had of posting things online it, it does leave an, a terrible soul bruising on you and it really makes you wonder what you got yourself into and why you, why you should continue to do it. Well, all I can say is the only reason why I do what I, why I do what I do is... Now why do I do what I do? Well, it helps when you see one because you're stuck with that. Um, most people I don't think have seen one. As far as most people that I know haven't seen one. A lot of the long-term researchers I've talked to, whether it be uh, the late John Vindernagel, Thomas Steenberg, uh, Meldrum, uh, the old guard, not many of them have seen them clearly. And I'm not too sure from what I've seen in regards to some of the stuff that's been online, I don't feel comfortable with sharing it with people online. I have not necessarily two sites, but two locations. I have you guys that I try to share with what I'm finding, and that's at one kind of level. And then I have another kind of group that I'm starting up that's really about helping people negotiate, and it's a small group. What happens when you find them? Um, I know that a lot of people are clamoring, you know, on, online, that if you found them, well, you should be sharing that stuff and you should be putting it on here and all that kind of stuff. I don't know, you guys. I've walked into some pretty terrible things in regards to some butchery that's happened with some pretty good people that I care about and, and can say I kind of love a bit. Uh, that's a good warning for me. Um, that's a cautionary note for me. I don't owe the Bigfoot community anything. I uh, love certain people in the community. I appreciate even certain people in the community that I don't agree with at all because I understand what dedication they have. Uh, I think those people are all fair people, um, whether I agree with their positions or not. I appreciate a lot of them. They probably don't even know of me, but uh, I've certainly appreciated a lot of them. I remember watching one time again, sorry Christopher, I'm harping. 
<laughs> mentioning you a lot in this video, but I remember one time I was watching one of his videos, and he, this is kind of when the, he was trying to no, negotiate, navigate audio recorders. How do you get an audio up in the in an area where you can uh, listen for a longer period of time? <laughs> and then he took this long trench, put this power cord down. I think it was a power cord. I'm pretty sure it was, and uh, you know, rigged up this whole thing. I mean, that was pretty smart. That was pretty original. That's what I'm talking about. Whether I agree with everything about Christopher, that doesn't matter. The guy's got creativity. Not only that, he's got the stamina to do it, regardless what people online might think of him. Um, I think that's what we need. Flexibility, open soil, uh, 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 a place where we can actually negotiate and navigate what we're coming across and what we're thinking. We don't have to throw anything out, whether it be certain ideologies that most people don't agree with. We keep all of that information. That's what good researchers do. As more information comes down, more eyes are on it, more people see it, more people witness it, whatever that behavior is, then we can start bringing it back in. So, listen, my Squatch Ramble today is really about, I want you to protect yourself a bit, you guys, if you're online, okay? Uh, you, have to do, you, you have to do what you need to do, but you also need to negotiate and find yourself a good channel or a good site whether it be Facebook or a private site or a blog site that you can trust fits where you're at and that whether that's the woo or anything else you're gonna need that I don't care what system you go into in regards to the ideology about the search for Bigfoot but you're gonna have to find one that's a trusting environment and again I mean you've heard me say this numerous times I am NOT wanting to post stuff that is hidden behind 700 leaves or that might look like something I don't think it does you guys any good in regards to what it is we're looking for which is clear stuff and there's a 10 year old genius and he I think he came up with a fusion reactor by the time he was 10 years old. <laughs> a small one, a mini one. <laughs> he's got like two PhDs in that. But probably by the time he was 13. <laughs> but he's absolutely is brilliant. And one of the unique things about him is uh, I think there's a I might put a little link here so you can watch him. But one of the things he laid back on when he started getting into all this stuff, remember he's only 10 years old talking to PhD adults, and heaven forbid this is a 10 year old, right? He's a prodigy. And uh, he liked listening to everybody's ideas, whether they, the rest of the system, the academics agreed with him or not. He didn't look at it that way because he still had a, a uh, he still had 10 years of not being kind of influenced by the academic world and that's probably what gave him his brilliance I think what's probably going to happen down the road in the Bigfoot community or Sasquatch community is we're going to get somebody like that somebody's going to show up that's going to be brilliant probably a prodigy probably put all the connections of the dots together because he sees it as a system down here not involved in it in here and when he sees all of it he'll probably uh, be, I wish it didn't happen, but he'll probably be sent before the wolves, online people, and some will come to their, his defense, but there'll be a lot of brutality to whoever that person happens to be that finally kind of solves the big package of what we're really dealing with here. So on one side of it, it's important that we hear everybody's positions and on the other side of it is we got to stop hacking each other apart because of our positions I will probably this is kind of a notification to my guys watching me people who follow me I'm more than likely going to just post on Bigfoot Okanagan's Facebook page and probably post only on Bigfoot Okanagan YouTube page I might uh, and I've been thinking more about this lately probably not post on indi individuals or other sites uh, or anything like that unless people ask me to post something or ask if they can post one of my stuff on other people's sites um, 
just for the sake I'm coming at it from a total different angle. I'm not saying I'm the prodigy because I'm not. Uh, but I do think differently for sure. And I, I know that what I do as regards the profession, I'm pretty brilliant at what I do in the profession that I do. And what tells me that is the amount of people that come to see me from around the world and the type of people who come and see me from around the world. And I got into this, I got into doing the Bigfoot researcher stuff or investigation. For one main reason, which was to give me a break from dealing with the minds of people. Now I think what I've walked into is dealing with the minds of people <laughs> to the point where it's affected other people and it's harmed other people where they've thrown in the towel. And that, in my opinion, I believe we needed those people as resource people. And that's not going to help me out at all. So I'm going to continue to do what I do and I can't appreciate enough how much uh, really good quality people I have found online, you're going to have to find them, and the only way you're going to find them is online. Or maybe some a few other, other methods too, but uh, I found some really good, incredibly good-hearted people, honest people, sincere people, and some I don't agree with, but I know their hearts. And, uh, you know, if they're fair with their process, which I believe, you know, most people are, when handed the right information, they'll adjust their position. I'm not even saying to adjust it to my position because <laughs> honestly I'm not sure what I'm dealing with yet here. Uh, I know what everyone else is claiming to, that they're dealing with online but honestly I, I don't know what I'm dealing with here. Um, I know I believe I'm dealing with something that has a higher state of conscience availability that leaves tracks, that seems to formulate certain tree formations that doesn't make sense to me. Not tree structures, I'm going to stop using the word tree structures, uh, because I think uh, what I've been running into anyways are, are, as mentioned in that last video, are man-made. The ones I find, and I'll, I'll show you this stuff, and I, I did post one of a strange, one by a roadway. That makes more sense to me. That's the cultural imprint I keep talking about. Um, anyways, listen you guys, when you get online and you start doing that stuff, you're going to have to do that stuff. You're going to have to find some good people either in your area or people that you can trust. I want you to hold your, don't jump in wholeheartedly to everyone you meet online. And that includes with me, it's okay if you come from a different angle or position. Uh, but do I do want to caution you, caution you a bit. Uh, I love that this topic has grabbed me such a degree that it is rather addicting because it does consume you. But I think the reason why it's so consuming is the feedback loop that comes back to our bodies and our psyche and our emotions and our feelings. And I think one of the biggest keys is that we're out in the forest again. That's where we began. We began in the forests. Our culture pulled us out of that and moved us into technology and corporate but that's not the biological rhythm of what human beings operate out of. We are biological creatures and we need biological environment to stay balanced inside of ourselves. Um, so that's it. I think that's all I want to say right now. I'm not sure whether that must be a Sasquatch crow in the background. <laughs> Rooster in the background. <laughs> so anyways, oh, I wanted to also point out something like this. Listen, like I said, I just traveled. I've been on the road for four months. Tons of stuff I'm editing right now. So there may be a lagging behind uh, my posts. It's just because I've got so many different videos I'm editing right now. And I'm just trying to mix them up a little bit to give you guys kind of a, a smorgasbord of different tastes. So um, if that happens, that's what's going to happen. Again, uh, uh, Winter Pathways will be starting up. This will be the second year. And that's when I use helicopters over the winter time. Um, I'm really hoping that this year the um, uh, cloud uh, ceiling height isn't as low as it was over winter last year because my place is on a mountain right behind me is the mountain and you couldn't see the mountain and I can't fly in a helicopter if I can't see the ground especially if you're flying over mountain mountainous areas so 
Uh, so I hope to do that again. But once I do that again, I'll give you, I'll show you guys some videos of startup of that. And I want to get the chopper all lined up with cameras and stuff. So it'll be kind of funky for you when you watch. So I want to encourage you guys to partake. And what I mean by that is rent a, tro a helicopter. I'll explain all this down the road. But rent a helicopter with a group of friends. It's just a fun thing to do for the weekend. And fly over nice areas that have nice fresh snow. And look for tracks. Uh, because they'll stick out quite readily for you. Okay, <laughs> all right, this isn't too bleak. Anyways, um, oh, what else did I want to say? Also, I need to brush up uh, or share another little piece of information. Uh, I was out talking, when I was traveling this summer, I went and I did uh, a couple of workshops for some people, and somebody posed the question to me, so I want to clear the record right here. They had asked me in a fire round question. Uh, in other words, I had a whole bunch of questions firing at me, and they had asked me whether or not I believe Sasquatches are invisible. And I, I and I said, yes now the reason why I said yes was I misheard what they had said I thought what they had said is do you do you believe that Sasquatches can appear invisible and I don't believe that at all I don't believe at all that Sasquatches are invisible at all I do believe however that because of how their hair or their yeah their hair is on their body and because of the design of their specific hair that it is translucent that in forested areas especially with the sunlight that's like this out today uh, there's an uh, optical thing that sh when the sun hits their hair on their body uh, reflects it differently and there's an opaqueness from what I understand of uh, Sasquatch hairs uh, that that sun could definitely go through that body hair and give it an appearance of being you know, mystical, or not necessarily mystical, but uh, I don't want to use the word mystical. That can give the appearance of being um, translucent, and that's what I believe. So just for the record, for anyone who still thinks my position is that I believe that Sasquatch is, can be invisible, I don't believe that. I don't have any evidence of that, so I can't believe that at this point. Uh, if one disappears in front of me, well then I'll come up here, just like I did with that last video, and I'll say, guess what happened to me today? <laughs> I was standing in front of a Sasquatch. And uh, it kind of just dis kind of disappeared. <laughs> and that's the same with portals or anything else. If it's valid, it's valid. I don't have to be threatened by it, and you guys don't have to be threatened by it. But don't take everything hook, line, and sinker just because you're watching it online and a person has a whole bunch of hits on their uh, YouTube channel or a whole bunch of subscribers. Uh, it's okay to start from the beginning and build up. And as time moves forward, again, I mentioned my research areas are over five year periods that way I can get the cycles of the seasons the information I need in those seasons uh, to correlate data so I can overlay it over top of five year periods to see if there's unique patterns that will assist me to get one on film for you guys it hasn't happened yet it's gonna take a lot of work on my part it's not gonna happen overnight and it's certainly not gonna happen by me sitting on the couch uh, being on my laptop. I'm going to have to either be in the air, which is my best, I think my best um, chance is going to be in the air in winter time to look for tracks so I can follow those tracks and over a few year period with that. So I hope you keep watching, but I hope you keep learning and I hope you keep doing and I hope you come up with Maybe one of you guys watching are the next prodigy, the one who can put all the dots together, the one who see it, the system down here, and uh, see what we're missing, because we're definitely missing something.